Brioche is a slightly sweet, very soft, ultra buttery French bread known for its beautiful richness and its gorgeous golden crumb. Brioche dough is what we call an enriched dough, simply because it's bolstered with tons of eggs, sugar, and butter, which is also why it's so damn delicious. So when I've asked people in the past due to its decadence, brioche is one of those breads that gets looped in sort of with luxury. And in turn, people think it's sort of hard to bake because it's so fancy. And though at first baking brioche bread can take you on an emotional roller coaster, once you have a few of the technicalities understood and you get a couple practice runs in, you're gonna make great bread. We are going to start our brioche with a pre-ferment called a sponge. A sponge is simply a mixture of yeast and a small amount of water and flour mixed and left to mingle for a short period of time. Bread made with a pre-ferment, for the most part, is going to have more character and flavor than a straight dough. For the sponge, pour 50 grams of warm water into a medium-sized bowl, sprinkle over 10 grams of active dry yeast, and mix it around with your fingers. Let that sit and activate for a few minutes, then when the mixture is bubbly, in with 50 grams of bread flour. Hand mixy the sponge until it just comes together, cover that up, and let it ferment at room temperature for 25 minutes. If you have one, I highly recommend using a KitchenAid stand mixer to make brioche. In its early stages, brioche is a super wet, sticky dough that can be tough to work with. Not to mention we need to emulsify a ton of butter into it, so a stand mixer is going to be your best friend for this, trust me. After 25 minutes, the sponge should be nice and active. You can see it definitely doubled in size. Okay, let us mix. Okay, so believe it or not, the order in which you add ingredients to the stand mixer bowl actually does make a difference. I've found that the dough comes together easier when dry ingredients are added on top of the wet. That's a nice sticky sponge right there. In this case, I'm going to plop the sponge in first, followed by the eggs, then the flour, salt, and sugar. That's five large whole eggs, followed by 450 grams of bread flour, 10 grams of salt, and 70 grams of caster sugar. Oh, and another reason this order makes sense is to keep the sponge separated from the salt and sugar, which can inhibit yeast growth. You can totally use regular white sugar if that's all you have, but I found that caster sugar, aka fine-grained sugar, blends into the dough better, so in with that. Once the bowl is loaded, click it in place and set up the dough hook attachment. Run the mixer on low speed until everything comes together, then increase the speed to medium until a smooth, shiny dough forms. I briefly mentioned this before, but brioche would not be what it is without butter. We need 250 grams of room temperature unsalted butter cut into small cubes. It's tough to give an exact time for something like this, but this is what the pre-butter dough should look like after 8-10 to 10 minutes of mixing. The dough is gonna be glossy and smooth, but still pretty sticky, and that's okay. Once you get to this point, plop the dough back in the mixer. Add the butter little by little, only moving on to the next batch when the butter is fully worked into the dough and you can't see it anymore. You can bump the mixer speed up to medium slash medium high, but bring it back down to low when adding the butter. Nobody needs butter painted walls. Or do we? Keep in mind that, especially if your mixer is an old girl like mine, making a dough like this can be taxing on the machine. If you feel the machine getting too hot or, you know, making weird noises and yelping for its life, stop the mixer, let it cool down, and chill out before moving on. After an additional 8 to 10 minutes of mixing, that's 15 to 20 minutes total if you count the pre-butter mixing, the dough should be even more glossy, shiny, and not so sticky anymore. At this point, we're gonna test for proper gluten development using the window pane test. Classic. Gluten is a protein found in wheat that is important for bread making because it sort of acts as a net that catches air as it rises. Without solid gluten development, your bread could turn out dense and flat. If the dough spreads thin enough for light to pass through it without breaking, congratulations, you've passed the window pane test. Notice how slack the dough is. It would be pretty tough to shape right now, but after a chilly power nap in the fridge for 12 or so hours, it's going to be a lot easier to work with. Okay, the hard part is over. Now place the dough in a greased bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, and pop it in the fridge for its long overnight nap. This process is called the bulk fermentation. During this step, the bread is going to grow in size, develop flavor, and stiffen up a touch. By the next day, the dough is going to be ready to go, so all we need to do is shape it and let it sit out at room temperature to proof before we bake it. Dump the dough onto a lightly floured surface and divide it up into three even pieces. So there are plenty of interesting ways to shape bread to end up with different styles, uh, many of which take practice and a bit of know-how, but never fear, I'll show you a foolproof way to shape a solid loaf in a standard loaf pan. 
Start by weighing out 275 gram portions of dough. If you're using my recipe, you're gonna have a bit of dough left over, so feel free to do something weird and fun with that. <clears throat> Brioche fish wellington? No? Oh, that's fine too. Start by bringing the dough into one mass with your hands, flattening it a bit, then folding the edges in to form a ball. One side will be smooth, the other not so much. On a lightly floured surface, bring your hands together to form a cage around the dough ball. The idea here is to leave a bit of room in the cage so that friction between the dough and the work surface begins to pull the dough to form an even smooth ball. Pro tip, do not use too much flour. You need some, but if you add too much, that friction is not going to happen. Once the three balls are formed, butter up a trusty old 9x5 loaf pan and pop the brioche balls in nice and snug. We need to let the shaped bread sit out a bit longer to let it rise and develop one final time before baking. This step is called proofing. I know, be patient, we're almost ready. Remember, generally speaking, more fermentation means tastier bread. A nice big bag is gonna help with temperature control and allow it to proof at a quicker rate, especially if the room you're baking in is chilly. Proofing time is affected by a load of factors, one primary factor being temperature. A neutral ambient temperature with no draft is best for proofing most breads, so I like to cover the loaf and stick it in the microwave or the oven to take its final nap. To make the burger buns, the technique is much the same as making a loaf. Simply weigh out smaller portions, 90 to 100 grams will make good sized burger buns, then shape the buns the same way as the loaf using the cage technique. This next step is optional, but if you bake the buns in ring molds, they tend to gain a bit of height, and honestly, some people just like the look more. If you want to go above and beyond, measure out a foot of foil and fold it up to form a long, thin piece about an inch high. Staple the ends together, then boom, you know, DIY ring mold locked and loaded. Shout out to the gents over at Chef Steps for teaching me this one. Once the buns are shaped, pop them in a bag and let them proof at room temperature the same way as the loaf. It shouldn't take more than a couple hours for both the loaf and the buns to proof. Once they increase by one and a half to two times their original size, they're gonna be ready to go in the oven. Oh yeah, those are nice and plump. Another surefire way to tell if your loaf is proofed is if they've risen to the top rim of the loaf pen. To get that gorgeous shine that brioche is so known for, we're going to paint on some egg wash. This is just a wash made from a couple egg yolks and a splash of water. Brioche gets its brownish coloring from the sugars and the butter in the bread and its sheen from the egg wash, so mix those three elements together and you've got yourself a gleaming loaf that doubles as a tanning mirror. Scoring brioche is optional and not necessary, but when done right it looks beautiful. You can opt out, but I like to use kitchen scissors to make a score pattern in my bread like this. When all goes well, it gives the bread these cool little monster teeth. Place the loaf on the middle rack of the oven and bake it for 20 to 30 minutes until it's baked through. While that bakes, let's take a look at our buns. Again, from here on out, it's much of the same of what we just did for the loaf. It's a very soft, supple dough. The egg wash is the same, just brush it all over those little guys. And from here, you can sprinkle on whatever toppings you like on a burger bun, or just leave it plain. I really dig poppy seeds on my burger and hot dog buns, so I'm gonna go on with some of those, and of course some sesame seeds as well. Classic stuff. At the 20 minute mark, check on the loaf. It might look done on the outside, but we need to make sure that it's cooked through on the inside too. To test it, use a cake tester like this or something similar. If the tester comes out clean, the loaf is done. If not, pop it back in the oven and bake it for another five to 10 minutes, then check again. The buns are a lot smaller and only take about 15 or so minutes to bake through, so do the same thing, but test them like you would the loaf at the 10 minute mark. I just baked the buns off camera so everything is finished and we are ready to munch. Almost. Almost ready. I know it's gonna be tough, but you gotta let these all rest for at least an hour. Preferably an hour and a half, two hours. If you slice into the bread too early, it can result in a dry and or gummy bread. And you know, you've come this far, so just wait. Alright, quick comparison, the left bun was baked without a ring mold, the right bun had a ring mold. Buns baked with the ring mold have a defined pale zone around the rim and have a little bit of height on the buns baked au naturel. On the other hand, the moldless buns have a little rounder of a shape, they stay shiny all the way around too. Both buns have a super nice color on the bottom and taste identical, so again, baking with ring molds is totally personal preference. Now here, the bun on the left was left dry while the one on the right got a treatment of egg wash. The dry bun still 
tastes fine, but it's sort of muted and matte in color. Honestly, it's sort of a depressing thing compared to the egg washed bun, which is shiny, glossy, and appetizing as the Dickens. Alright, so as you can see, the loaf came out decent too. The flavor is great, the texture is also great, but one of my three balls did not open up from the score, which makes which makes me a sad boy. You know, the beauties are in the imperfections. This is baking. You'll get them next time. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> All right, let's slice into this bugger. Ooh, she pretty. Also, for a soft, delicate bread like brioche, it's best to use a sharp, thin knife like a slicer or something similar. A classic serrated bread knife is just gonna crush through the delicate crumb. Now, my favorite thing to do is toast this off with some more butter, maybe put a soft scramble on top and uh, go to town. Or just eat it plain. No matter how you decide to do it, brioche is delicious bread, and uh, you're gonna have a good time. Over the past year, I've really learned to enjoy bread baking. I used to never bake, but I feel like I learn something new every time I bake. Whether it's tweaking a shaping technique, figuring out the perfect time and temperature to bake the bread in the oven, scoring the bread. Baking bread is one of those seemingly simple tasks that if you get into it, isn't so simple. But it is super fun, and like anything else with practice, you're gonna get a lot better at it. Pretty soon it will be easy. Or at least easier. If you are still here and watching my uggo face blabber about, I thank you. Thank you so much for sticking around, watching till the end of the video, and supporting my channel. If you are still here and you are not already subbed, it would be mega dope if you could click that subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get notified when I post a new video. I post new long form videos every Wednesday at 10 a. Come on. I post new long form videos every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Okay, that's all I got for you this week. So thanks for watching and I will see y'all next week, my beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful people. Ta-ta.